Each year in the UK alone, some 2,500 yearlings go to public auction, where they're offered for sale and where the dreams of their careers as future champions is first ignited. It may look like a simple process, but the work and preparation that goes into getting a yearling to sell is endless. Most sales preparation lasts between 8 and 12 weeks. Um, every horse is slightly different, um, so you have to tailor your, your, your work programme for the horse. But that's basically what most people look at. Um, and, it, you know, obviously, it's, you know, some horses it's more intensive than others. You know, some horses which are, need to say, fat and lazy um, need a little bit more work than something that's light and is a, is a you know, fussy feeder. So, you know, needs to say every animal is slightly different. Tell us a little bit about what goes into the preparation. Well, so the most important thing is to try and keep them in one piece because, needless to say, animals are hell-bent on uh, self-destruction. But um, so what we're trying to do is trying to produce an article that looks like an athlete um, and hopefully with you know, the right confirmation that will appeal to, to buyers with, with fashionable pedigrees. Agents, trainers and potential owners will inspect each yearling for the unique formula they believe will make a particular horse a success on the track, a skill agent Bobby O'Ryan is renowned for. Good horses have faults as well, you know, but it's nice to start off with something um, that's nearly nearly 100% correct anyway to start off, so um, we take it from there. And what are you looking for when the horse walks? Uh, just a good swing to him, covers a bit of ground. Um, I like to see a horse with a real good walk. Um, he's going someplace, you know, he, he's covering ground and um, when he turns around there, comes back up against you, you know, he's... he's nearly 100% correct in front and um, he's a good attitude and he's a good set of knees on him and good head and good outlook and a uh, good swagger to him, you know, so I like him. Now this guy looks a good size for a yearling, is that something that you also look for? Yeah, he's quite, he's quite big for an oratorio, quite a lot of them are handy. Uh, this horse's dam is by definite article, which will bring a bit of size into it. Um, He's a horse that hopefully I'd like to try and buy and he might do boat codes if uh, when he's finished on the flat he might go jumping. It is the vendor's job to ensure each yearling is shown off in its best light on the day. From a consignment's perspective you really want horses that are acceptable to the majority. Uh, this is not always possible, but if you can find horses which basically um, every horse has its, has its um, plus points and its minus points, but if you can find horses which are acceptable to the majority, then hopefully you can sell those horses. This horse in particular, as you can see, he's a very well-proportioned horse. He has great bone, great depth, great muscle definition. Um, he looks athletic. He has an awful lot of quality about him, which is what I like him. Uh, and he's an athletic moving horse, um, and um, you know he looks appealing to the eye. You can imagine, you know, you can, you're looking at a, the unopened package here, and you can imagine him being a racehorse, a successful racehorse. The horse in question is lot 274, and the vendors have high hopes for his future, not least because in addition to his good confirmation, his pedigree also ticks the right boxes. Right now, Shamadal is very popular, and this is a, a very nice colt that we have um, out of a champion in Germany uh, called Borgia, and uh, we think he's a pretty nice colt, and we're very hopeful for his prospects today. Dubawi and Shamadal, it is so exciting to see two such young sires, not only breeding lots of winners, but breeding group winners, breeding really quality horses, whether it be Shakespearean, whether it be Pert's Voice, or, you know, Sand Vixen, you know, they're both breeding at the top level. A horse's pedigree or bloodlines are very important in trying to determine how they will turn out. And as with anything, fashion plays a key role. It's very fashionable, it's flat sires especially, to go in and out of fashion um, quite, quite quick. You know, you buy foals to resell them as yearlings, they could be gone out of fashion by the time you come back to the yearling sales. Um, and, you know, those precocious horses 
Uh, if they get a Royal Ascot winner or something like that, everybody wants one of them the following season, you know. With all the boxes ticked, the final step before a potential buyer makes the crucial decision to part with his hard-earned cash is the vet check. So what does the vetting process involve on the sales ground? On the sales ground, really, um, there's three aspects of it uh, that are very important. The, the most important is the physical examination, examination of the limbs, the heart, the eyes and so on. Um, the next two aspects are scoping, um, basically to, to check the airway, to check for uh, a disorder called laryngeal hemiplasia, which is basically when they, they go in the wind or um, they make a whistle. Um, and also x-rays, so we do x-ray screening to check for major abnormalities and really to put, put things at ease for the, for the purchaser that there's nothing that's going to be uh, a major problem when the horse goes into training. At long last, all the weeks and months of preparation in this young horse's life come to a head as he enters the sales ring and awaits his fate. Tensions are running high. proved a success, selling for 230,000 guineas, which is the equivalent of 241,500 pounds. Purchased by Angus Gold for Sheikh Hamdan, he's a cult with a future. The ordeal is almost over, but the final step is a post-sale wind test, where the horses lunge while the vet double-checks he is breathing correctly without making a noise. The result is good and the colt now returns to his stable where he awaits the next phase of his journey. The next time we see him, he could be carrying the famous blue and white silks of his owner, Sheikh Hamdan. <laughs>